Friday, man, it's been a long week for me, but you know what? Nothing better than ending your week with another webinar. So super pumped. We are here today uh, with all you need to know about the Form 3B. Uh, we've got Mick here from Form Labs. Hey, Mick, how are you? Thanks for joining really us. We really appreciate you taking the time this morning with us. Um, as some of you may have been following the series, I think we're on number three of kind of this super exciting world of 3D printing and, and everything else in between and kind of, you know, we've touched on how to do the scan, print and upload. We had, last week we had uh, Rick Ferguson with us who is kind of, you know, really big into the whole digital printing field. And then today we've got uh, Form Labs with us as well. So we're super pumped to have you with us. Uh, as most of you know, a lot of the stuff that we've been talking about is, you know, how do you start into this world? And of course, number one thing in order to be able to be successful in this, of course, is a scanner. So our main focus is met at I-700. We are a reseller and distributor of it. Uh, so for us, you know, we can see the benefits of it being an open system. Uh, they've got a lot of really cool integrated apps into it and everything else in between. So uh, a lot of the things that we're doing are kind of in line with the medic. With Form Labs in particular, uh, I myself have had quite a bit of experience with it. I think it's super great. I'm excited for you guys to see all of its amazingness as well and get some really good questions out there for Mick so that you can kind of continue on your digital journey and make the decisions that you need to in order to make yourself successful and helpful in your practice. So why don't we start with our first poll? Uh, number one, how many of you out there have an intraoral scanner? So let's get that going and then we'll do a little uh, intro with Mick and then uh, we're off to the races. So how many of you have a scanner? Ooh, wow, 100% of you have a scanner. Mick, that's impressive, hey? <laughs> yeah, it's good news. Good news. Yeah, for good you. news. You're well on your journey. So great, that's good to know. So let's just get in there. So Mick, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, your role with Form Labs, and then you know what? Take it away. I'm gonna filter through some questions uh, you know, throw them at us and we'll try to kind of go through as many as we can in the half hour that we have today with you all. So Mick, tell us a little bit about you. Thank you very much, Maria. Uh, so my name is Mick. I am the uh, channel lead for North America for Form Labs. So it's my responsibility to, along with our channel partners, uh, make sure that the clinical market is being served to the best of our ability uh, with not just 3D printers, um, because uh, as you'll see, a, a theme of what I'm talking about is going to be the interconnectedness of the entire workflow and how each of these different steps depend on the other. Um, it's making sure that uh, they're served and not just uh, with the right, having the right products, but supported um, in a way that they can help this technology deliver real results and quick ROI to their business. Awesome. Perfect. So, um... Maybe we'll get out our second poll here now is whether or not how many of you are actually 3D printing already. Uh, so that'll be interesting to see uh, just, you know, where, where are we at with all of this? So are you 3D printing? If you guys can all, oh, you're 50-50. Okay, perfect. So that's great. Um, so why don't we go into a little bit about, you know, 3D printing in dentistry currently and uh, kind of, you know, let's develop this and see what kind of questions we get in. So. Um, Basically, Mick, what do you see happening chair side in kind of that dentistry world at the moment? Are you seeing that it is something that's kind of like growing exponentially? Do you see that there's a lot of people kind of still wavering? Like, what are you seeing on your end? It's certainly growing uh, really, really fast. And the main reason behind that, I think, is uh, accessibility uh, in 3D printing overall. Um, so in one sense, accessibility is simply price. Uh, and it's true that the cost of the 3D printer has drop significantly from what it was even a few years ago. Um, but accessibility is also about ease of use. Uh, it's also about making sure that uh, the printer is not something that you need to be an expert on uh, hardware or, or 3D printing technology to be able to use effectively. Uh, so the way Formlabs really helps that out is by features like scan to model, which allows you to go directly from an intro scan to a, uh, to a model that might be used for a retainer or, or uh, a liner for vacuum forming. Um, I think Evident plays a huge, huge role in accessibility. Uh, services like yours make it so that doctors can design uh, or can print appliances like surgical guides and uh, night guards, uh, even uh, going into uh, permanent temporary restoration um, for, without having to uh, learn the software, which is uh, really powerful and it's an amazing development but it can be the most difficult step 
uh, of the three to learn how to do effectively. A lot of offices just don't have time for that. So partnering with someone like uh, like yourself enables them to bring the interval scanner in-house, bring the 3D printer in-house and outsource the design. Yeah, that's actually a really great point. Um, you know, yes, we, aside from being a meta reseller, we're obviously we're one of the world's largest CAD CAM uh, outsourcing centers. And, you know, we, we really want to be able to put the digital workflow and, and the digital accessibility to anybody. So regardless of where you are in your journey, we can kind of help you along the way. So if, if it's something that you've, you know, you've got, you know, a couple of mills in your office, or you've got, you know, a beginner stage printer, then yes, you can use our services. And, and we will continue to have that like bigger discussion with you as well as to, you know, this is where you are, this is where you can be, this is what you can do. You know, my background is very heavily focused on digital workflow, digital labs, all that kind of stuff. So I have a really good, clear understanding of where you can take it as long as you're well supported with your equipment. I think one of the, the great things that I've experienced with Form Labs is the support. Like your guys' the support is insane. Um, you know, I, I, it's very quick. Uh, all of your staff is knowledgeable. I've dealt with so many people over there. And uh, I do feel that it is probably one of the more simplistic kind of almost plug and play solutions out there. I know when I did my unboxing and I had challenged Phil's seven-year-old as I did that, <laughs> and uh, I managed to beat them. <laughs> I hope so. But pretty much from the minute I cut open the box to did my first print was like 17 minutes. I was like, wow, this is insane. I didn't have to, you know, get my bachelor of whatever and you know figure out how to reinvent the wheel to try to get it going so I was really impressed with its just ease and ability and accessibility to anybody that would use it so that's awesome yeah absolutely I think our uh so our dental service plan team uh is is who would help support that and um despite how easy it is to to unbox and to start up using uh we do offer as well uh 90 minute training um it's a video call it's a live video call with one of our dental service plan team and our so those of you watching who might know form labs um might know that uh we're not uh exclusively in uh, in the dental industry so form labs is actually the largest 3d printing company in the world in terms of uh how many professional units are actually working and operating in not just dentist office but uh, engineering facilities product design facilities and so on but within that really large uh, company, we have a very specific uh, unit of uh, about 70 people called the dental business unit. And I'm included in that, um, but our support team is included in that, our uh, product uh, strategy team and our uh, user feedback team is, is also included in that. And we're focused exclusively on dentistry day and night. Now, the advantage of being part of this much larger company that is leading 3D printing globally is that our supply chain, uh, we make all our own resins. Um, our uh, our hardware development and our material science is actually a much, much larger group of people that enable us to be on the cutting edge of materials to make sure that we're in stock, uh, that we don't have a lot of the supply chain issues that uh, are cropping up all over the place now, um, and really able to use our strength uh, to make sure that our partnerships are delivering the best results to our customers. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I, honestly, I don't have anything, um, like, I just have good things and praise to say to you guys, because we've had just such a great experience. I'm so appreciative of, of, the, of the opportunity to be able to be in partnership with you and uh, your team. Um, so one of the kind of the big things that come across my table, because, you know, I do speak with a lot of dentists, and I'm always trying to figure out, like, what, well, how do I direct them and stuff? And, you know, I, 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 formats is always kind of at the forefront, um, but materials wise, you had just brought that up briefly. So I find that your material width and span is actually quite large. Um, you have a variety of different resins, a variety of different opportunities for things. And uh, you've got the printable crowns you can do. You have a permanent crown resin. You've got your night guard materials. Um, one question that I had a dentist ask, ask me yesterday was whether or not you had a, like you've got the dental LT, which is kind of a bit more of a harder night guard material. Is that correct? Yes, it's a hard night guard material. And so do you guys have another option for something that's a little bit more flexible or more kind of in that world of thermo, thermal flex? So this is something that the market clearly demands. Uh, and about, uh, depending on who you ask, between 75 and 80% of uh, most of the Kuzla guards produced in North America are uh, this flexible material. So uh, without giving too much away, I can say we're, we're quite aware of it. Uh, we're quite aware of uh, its position in 3D printing. Um, and when combining that with uh, what I said just, just recently about 
our material science and our supply chain, I, all I can do is just give a big wink. Yeah, I hear you, Rick. <laughs> so I'm, I'm pumped. I'm always excited about all these new things. So I had a question come through. Is there principal crown resin uh, more for taps? So I'll let you answer that. So we have a uh, temporary crown and bridge resin as well as yeah. a permanent restorative material. Yeah. Um, in the US, both are uh, completely ready to go and being used. Uh, in, in Canada, we've got uh, Health Canada approval for the temporary crown and bridge material, permanent crown. Uh, we are still working on that approval. We expect it shortly. Okay, awesome. Uh, we've got kind of an interesting question. I'd like to see what, uh, what this works like, uh, Mick. Uh, kind of a weird question, but what would happen if I run a non-Formlabs resin through a Formlabs printer? So, uh, that first of all, you you would have to um, set your own parameters uh, for for the printing of it. Um, if you were to do that, uh, then you'd be, I would say, liable to experience some maybe uh, less than stellar results. One of the things about Formlabs that makes our printer totally unique is that we use a, a printing method called low force sterile lithography. Uh, virtually every other printer out there uses some form form of projection, whether it's uh, a DLP projector or a, an LCD um, projector. Uh, and what that means is a lot of the resins that are developed for DLP uh, wouldn't quite work uh, the same way in, in a low force stereolithography printer. So, you know, name your other 3D printer brand. A lot of times you can just kind of interchange between those. But with Formlabs, uh, instead of a projector, we have a laser that is housed within a, a metal box uh, that we call the light processing unit. Now it makes our printer much more reliable um, because that laser is completely protected within it. Whereas the projector stuff gets on the screen, you're in trouble. Um, yeah. It's also a much more accurate way to print uh, because it's a single laser with a, a really small spot size of 85 microns. That is a step motor that can actually move uh, as low as uh, three microns left or right. Um, and because of that printing method, the resins that we develop in-house are specifically formulated to work with uh, our lasers uh, in our cartridges with our automatic resin dispensing. Um, and that's why you get such great results out of such an inexpensive machine on, on the Form 3B. Now, some DLP resins probably work just fine, uh, but um, you really can't get that guarantee. And we're not in the business of uh, selling an experimental workflow. In yeah. F1 Labs, what we deliver is something that we stand by and we expect to be successful with the same results time after time after time. That's how you get the accuracy, dependability, and reliability that you see with the Form 3D. For sure. Yeah, I totally find that that, you know, that's a really great kind of way to, to, to move around things because, you know, as, as you guys in the in the dentist world are out there and you're, you know, you're wanting to make these decisions and, you know, it is still, uh, you know, a, a large purchase for your practice. It's still a change in your workflow. It's all, all of that stuff. And it's, you know, it's really important that that you do your research and that you really take into consideration what it is that you're attempting to achieve with this 3D printer, what kind of support you're going to get, what kind of support you have even just in your staff alone, like do you have the capacity to take this on. So, uh, Mick, when you have someone that's kind of on the fence, like what what's kind of the one big thing that you tell them, like, why do you need to start with 3D printing? Well, it, it depends, and I would say it falls into two categories. Uh, okay. First is the, uh, the dentist who's focused on return on investment and everything that they buy needs to uh, basically generate a return within a certain amount of time or it's not worth it to them. Fortunately, uh, a 3D printer is one of the highest ROI pieces of technology you could possibly bring into your office. Uh, you know, when you're printing surgical guides that cost uh, just over $2, um, or when you're printing night guards that in terms of materials costs are, are uh, just three or four dollars in, in, you know, in uh, our dental LTV2 resin, uh, it's really easy to get quick ROI on a machine like that. So that's the first case study. And those are typically going to be the offices where every single cent is tracked uh, in a spreadsheet somewhere and they're really on top of it. They might have an ERP system or something like that that is uh, really focused on making sure the practice is always profitable. Um, and always uh, able to sustain itself. Um, and I think we do really well there. Uh, and then there's another category that is looking at technology and ROI is important. It's never not important, but uh, what they are more interested in is uh, control because they feel like if they can have complete control over the digital workflow by bringing in the scanner, 
by, uh, by working with you to have really quick response times on, uh, on case delivery so that they can print it out um, so that they never have to have that negative patient experience having to say reschedule an implant surgery because a part is, hasn't gotten there or got there but wasn't exactly to their liking. Um, those uh, offices that are focused on the control element are also uh, really eager to start bringing in 3D printing because it gives them the ability to run their practice exactly how they see fit. Right, absolutely. No, I, I hear you. I, it's just such a such a game changer. I find it's just really you know it's that kind of that next step. It's that importance for you to be able to provide different options for your patients and and for everything in between. Like I know COVID's just done a number to a lot of the different aspects of both the dental industry and field. And you know labs are doing the best that they can to be able to keep up and to to do what they're needing. But you know there are, there's definitely still that window for labs out there. You know just keep that in mind. Anyone thinking about how does this affect labs? There will always be a space out there for the labs. But there's also the space for dentists wanting to get into the whole 3D printing world and just providing a little bit of different accessibility to that you know clientele base that's that's needed just due to the quick shift in the world uh, now due to this crazy pandemic. So yeah, um, and I would say as well. Uh, you know, if, if you think about this on a massive scale, on like a continent wide scale, uh, when we think about new technology and how it's adopted, some of us might have that curve in, in our minds that uh, starts with, you know, the, the cutting edge, the, the experimenters goes into an early adopter phase, and then an early majority phase. Uh, right now, we're moving from the early adopter phase into the early majority phase. Mm -hmm. And early adopters are willing to sort of put up with some amount of, for lack of a better term, BS with, with their machines, because they know that that technology, uh, once it becomes mainstream, they're gonna be the authorities on it. They're gonna be the people who are able to speak about it uh, and understand it and use it as uh, more effectively than anyone else. But once you start having these conversations with uh, people who are in this sort of next phase, which, which I would say is the early majority phase, this is when, it's a nuts and bolts conversation. This is when, a, what does it do to me? This is not technology that I think is cool or interesting, but it's about what can I deliver for my practice and how is this yeah. going to help me? And that's, that's really the big shift I've seen in talking to Dennis, especially over the past year, as COVID has kind of thrown away some of the more superfluous uh, thoughts and really just focus on what a practice needs to be able to deliver the results it can to its patients. Yeah, 100%, absolutely. Um, so as you're saying, you know, thinking about what you want to support at your practice and the things that you want to kind of fabricate and all that kind of stuff. And so we've got a question here. Can uh, we design printer ready files with the form lab? So the great thing about the partnership that we have with you guys is that, you know, we do our, our design. So be it a night guard, denture, um, you know, we can do a liner planning for you. There's just basic models, diagnostic wax ups, all that kind of stuff. So if you've got this idea that you want to be able to shift into the 3D printing industry, and you're like, man, but there's the nesting and there's this and there's that and everything else in between. Like, how am I going to manage all of that? Um, we can help you with that. So, you know, we've got the ability to be able to provide you with not only your STL design of what we've actually fabricated for you, but we can place it on a build plate also so that all you have to do is open up your program on your end, take the file that we've, you know, added the supports nested for you, everything else in between, and then hit print. So that's super great because then it kind of takes away some of that time that you may need to spend on, you know, loading up the, you know, trying to piece together your, your Tetris or your Lego pieces uh, to get your most successful print. So we've had some uh, great training from the team here at Form Labs to be able to kind of do that efficiently and effectively for you guys and uh, not having that time to do that. So that's a super, super good thing that I just wanted to bring up um, yeah, as we kind of move into this, right? That works really well with our remote print capabilities on, on the Form 3B. So um, let's say, uh, you know, you got the file out to evident and you want to leave the office, uh, you got to catch a game, or maybe you just want to go home and it's late in the day. Um, all you need to do is what's called prime the printer, which is super easy. It's a button on our touch screen. The printer will be ready to go. And then you get the file from evident at 8 p.m. You don't have to run back to the office to start the print. You can actually start it from your uh, phone or from your desktop at home. Um, and it'll be ready when you come back in the office the, the next day. So. Uh, we're really making it convenient uh, as part of our overall message about accessibility and, and ease of use. 
Um, and then one final response to that question is, uh, if it's not an appliance that you need to design, Preform with the scan to model feature does enable you to go straight from a scan to a horseshoe model to do a suck down retainer or a layer. Awesome. Yeah, um, I can just quickly on that remote printing. So I know that's something that kind of has been tucked away in my brain for some time. And I have actually a new colleague that started here with us a couple of weeks ago and he was trying to load up into the form labs and he was having some issues here. And so I'm there comfort in my house with my coffee and my bagel. And I just <laughs> went into my remote printing and I was like, boop, boop, boop. Off it went and I could see it printing and I was like, oh, this is amazing because I didn't have to rush down to the office. I didn't have to do any of that. I was able to solve the issue right away. It was awesome. So I was super pumped that I managed to finally get my first remote printing. I was like a, like a school girl in, in like getting her ice cream after a long day. It was amazing. So yay, you guys. Um, we've got another question here. Uh, is there an app needed to remote print? So it's Maybe just quickly, if you can, just touch on that. Uh, how does that all work with the remote printing? So there's a .com and then there's an app as well, or how do you do that? Or is it all .com? So it, it's a capability within Preform. Um, and uh, Preform is, is our name for our nesting software. Uh, so uh, I actually, and it's totally free. So our nesting software Preform is totally free. Mm -hmm. All the capabilities that I'm talking about are totally free. Uh, which is not the same across the 3D printing landscape at all. Um, and uh, I, I encourage everyone listening to actually just download Preform right now. Um, if you go to Form, if you just type in your search bar, Form Labs Preform, you're going to be able to download it. Um, now, it does need to know that you have a Form 3B to enable scan to model uh, and to enable the remote print capability, obviously. Yeah, can't. so this doesn't work with the two. It's only with the 3B. Is that correct? Uh, Scan the model, I am almost certain actually does work with the two. It does not work with the form three. Okay. The, three. the form three B is a, is a dental specific printer. The form three is what we do, you know, what most of the other industries use. For biocompatible, for regulatory reasons, uh, the, that's what the B stands for, is biocompatibility. Okay. Um, so uh, so these, these features are available with the, with the form three B. Once you connect the form three B and your preform, then you can, uh, then you can start uh, utilizing all of that. Now, um, that doesn't mean that if you just downloaded Preform right now that you wouldn't get a chance to see, you know, how easy it is to use a, uh, to orient a part, um, to uh, add support scoop part. Uh, if you have any files from Evident or anything like that, um, you can import them into Preform and, and you can see exactly what it's like to use it. And I think it's a really good first impression. It's a really good emblem of our ethos about making things really easy to use for uh, for our customers. Um, so Absolutely. yeah. And if you want a file to play around with, I can definitely send one. Just email me, Mick at formlabs.com, M-I-K. It's uh, my name's right there. Awesome. Thanks, Mick. Um, so let's uh, throw up another poll here. Um, what is stopping you currently from investing in 3D printing right now? Because uh, I know that originally 50% of you did not come into this just yet. So let's, uh, let's get this through and see. Okay. So the big one is knowledge. I don't know where to start. Well, guess what, guys? You are in good hands because between Mick and his team and me and our team, we got you covered. Like this is, okay, well, we can get this. No problem. We're here for you. Um, and then the next one is uh, I'm worried about the support and training. Again, we got you covered. Like this is one thing that, you know, this is our, our forte. We love digital workflows and we are here to try to make it as easy and streamlined for you as humanly possible and like I, I've, I've talked about with the form labs it is a very straightforward they've got great team great support you can reach out to them you can reach out to me we're, we're, we've got you like let that not be a stopping point for you and like Mick said if, even if you've got questions specifically for him he's given you his email um, mine's a little more complicated I don't spell it but anyhow um just you know how to get them okay i'm here i know so uh thanks guys for, for sharing that uh, so that's awesome uh let me just quickly go through and making sure that i'm covering everything um one of the other things mick is uh build plate size mm -hmm. so there's been a couple of questions here with regard to how many models you can put on a plate so i guess it depends on what you're doing but how about you uh you tell me what this is all about because you guys is it you have two different build plate sizes we do and I happen to have both of them right behind my seat. So this is, is it being guarded by that cute little puppy in the background? Yeah, that's my dog, Cassie. 
to Hi. not as interested in digital dentistry as everyone else, <laughs> um, but uh, all the same, um, she's a good audience member. All right, so the Form 3B, which is uh, what a practice should, should adopt, uh, is this thing. Um, so okay. we have one, two, three, four. We have eight models right here, printed flat. If you want to organize them vertically, you can do up to 16, um, but this is going to be the quickest print, uh, the best for your workflow nine times out of 10. Uh, and if what you're focused on printing is uh, surgical guides or, uh, or dental LT, uh, occlusal guards, then yeah. the Form 3B is what you want. Um, it's, uh, like I said, it's the uh, build platform is uh, basically six inches by six inches. Um, okay. Now, if you're interested in production, uh, uh, specifically uh, production of LT, um, uh, of, of occlusal guards or of aligners and retainers, this is what you want. Oh, it smells. Yeah, it's big. So this is the, this is the build platform for the 3BL. Uh, I think, I'm not gonna count the whole thing. Um, I think there are 24 models on here. Uh, right. It could be 25, because this, this little guy, I think might, someone might have squeezed them in. Um, and uh, you can print up to 50, uh, 55 vertically. Again, you're probably going to want to go horizontal uh, because it'll print more quickly uh, and you won't have to use any supports. Um, so that, that's the workflow thing I recommend. Uh, the build volume is five times as big and the plate itself is three and a half times as big as that uh, Form 3B that I just showed. Is, um, so it's a different size printer. So the resin tanks are also bigger as well, or sorry, the resin, like the resin models? Yep, and there are two lasers. Uh, the cartridges are the exact same, actually. So if you have a oh, you, you want to go into production, you don't need, you know, your resin's not going to be wasted or anything like that. It takes two cartridges at once, um, and the tank is bigger. Uh, but uh, it's, you know, anyone who uses one will tell you it's really just a Form 3B, but blown up. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just bigger. Um, so, and the laser is still really focused in the same spot size. So you get the same print quality. Um, you get the same level of detail, uh, but it is two lasers, so it can print faster. Um, and it is low force serial lithography, so it still has that really high quality that you expect with Form 3B. Awesome. Um, just a quick question here from someone whether or not the 3BL is justifiable for a clinic. So I guess that's, that's kind of relatable to what you're doing. So if you're a huge ortho practice and you're doing a whole bunch of aligners and you've got huge production and all that, then maybe the 3BL is justifiable. You know, if you're just starting out and you're doing, you know, night guards and, you know, here and there, then you could stick with the 3B. So I think that there's, Mick, do, do you agree? <laughs> I'm actually for you. 100%. Okay. I'm like just going with it. Um, no, no, you're, you're, I mean, you're totally right. So, but the, the team at Phone Labs can definitely give you the information needed based on what your practice needs are and kind of direct you from there. Price point wise, Mick, what's the difference between the two? Uh, the 3BL is roughly twice as expensive. Okay, okay. So good to know, so just for you guys out there. The price, same ease of use. Okay, okay, got it. Um, and then any final, as we're just approaching our little half hour mark here, Mick, do you have any other last minute tips and tricks for someone looking to start? Like basically the first thing for me personally is have the confidence to want to jump two feet in and know that you know, regardless of where the cookie crumbles, you're gonna have support somewhere. Um, and then Mick, what about you? So based, you know, based off your poll results, based off my conversations, uh, the, my main overarching message would be, it is so much easier than you probably think it is. Uh, yeah, agreed. It is, it is unboxing something, plugging it in, following some prompts and clicking a few buttons. Uh, and then you're printing models uh, you're working with evidence to do the technical design stuff, which does have a, a learning curve. And that's why they're there. And that's why they're so valuable. But all you have to do is print, follow the instructions, uh, and then you'll be able to be getting ROI on a machine like this in no time. Right. So again, the printer that comes with a printer, then you've got your curing, and then you've got your, sorry, you've got your wash, and then you've wash. got your curing, right? So there's a, an absolute process that goes into play um, when you're doing models really with any of the printers, because you want to ensure that, that you're, you're going through that process for longevity of product and everything else in between. Yeah, and that, so, that Form 3B complete package, which includes the wash, cure, all the accessories you need, as well as dental service plan, is priced right at $6,000 in the US. So, uh, you know, accessibility, really like I said at the beginning, it's part of price. Our price is part of accessibility. Uh, and we, we're committed to keeping that element uh, very, very accessible as well. Um, so, 
uh, yeah, it, it really is going to be quicker to get from where you are now to productively 3D printing than, uh, than you, you probably think it will. Yeah, that's awesome. So just one last poll, guys, before we, uh, we end our little session today. So uh, are you interested in evident digital designs and 3D printing? And in that, just keep in mind that, you know, regardless of where you are in your journey, uh, we can definitely uh, set you up for success. Uh, it looks like 100% of you want some help with that. So, you know what, Mick, that's, that speaks volumes because that means that people are ready to kind of go through this. Um, you know, the, they're looking at those 3D printers, they're looking at all that kind of stuff in order to be able to kind of expand the world that they're currently in. So that's awesome. So I super appreciate you having uh, some time with me today. It's always great meeting with you and, uh, you know, kind of getting in all of your knowledge. Any other last minute parting words, Mick? Leave nope. a last impression <laughs> with our group. Uh, thank you very, very much for having me on. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Um, and I uh, hope to be back soon. Perfect. Awesome. Well, thanks very much, guys, for joining us today. Again, happy Friday. Have a great weekend. Reach out to us if you're needing any support. Mick and I are here for you. And uh, keep an eye out for our next webinar coming up as we continue to kind of walk down this path of 3D printing. We've got a couple of really cool things coming up. We're going to be touching on, you know, if you do want to use our design services, you've got your equipment in place. What does that look like? And, uh, you know, we're trying to kind of see what we've got out there that we can share with you. So if you have any kind of ideas or information that you're wanting or you think would be really great to have as a webinar, reach out to us. We're open to anything because we're doing this for you in order to support you through this. So once again, thanks, Mick. I appreciate you. And until next time, guys, take Thank care. You.